All right, I'm back from Oshkosh, and we're going to start with a little homage to the old days of the student pilot cast and reconnect with Nexair Avionics on another project they've been working on. Are you ready to bring an incredible aircraft that's not even that old in airplane terms into the future at a fraction of the cost of an incredibly high-priced new version of the same aircraft? Are you confused yet? Well, listen or watch on and get deconfused in episode 71 of the Student Pilot Cast. Chandler Tower, Cherokee 4121 Tango is at Chandler Air Service. We have Zulu and uh, we'd like a south departure, please. Welcome back, SPC listeners. I'm going to kick off the post-Osh 24 era of the podcast with a little throwback. An homage, if you will, to the, one of the episodes I did back in the early days, just after AirVenture 2009. Yep. That's 15 years ago. Man, time flies. Anyway, back then, we did a quick feature on Nexair Avionics with David Featherson from Nexair on their Saratoga NX product line. I loved the concept, and I loved the airplane they had on display back then. So since it's my podcast, I did the feature and released it, even though it didn't have a lot to do with training or being a student pilot. But I do that sometimes, as you know, because if I'm interested, some of you probably will be too. Well, I ran across David again at Osh 24 and a new airplane. Well, a new-ish airplane, where they're taking a similar concept and applying it to the most popular GA single piston there is, a Cirrus. Specifically, we'll be talking about the Cirrus SR22 Turbo model, but not the new Gen 7 that Cirrus just announced for over a million dollars. Nope. This one's going to be a Gen 3, brought into modernity with a big avionics upgrade and being sold by Nexair for less than half of the new one. I got to talk to David briefly, and he claimed to remember the interview we did back then 15 years ago, but I think he might have been just being nice. I mean, seriously, I say that because I barely remember it myself, and I have an RSS feed that helps me remember all the details. So the next time any of you talk to David, find out the real story. Maybe you can do it when you're ordering your own SR22 upgrades. After talking to the guys at Nexair for a bit, Brian Wolf, sales manager there, agreed to do a feature with me the next morning. I had to contain my questions, which were plenty, until we were talking on camera, so I didn't know a lot about what they were up to until we talked on the record, so to speak. Turns out, not much has changed. Except for the airplanes, the avionics that are considered state-of-the-art, the mission of the aircraft, and the age of the air... All right, so technically, a lot has changed. But the business model that Nexair is pursuing is pretty close to what they were doing way back then. Yes, they will work on many different types of airplanes, and yes, they can be a pretty typical avionics shop, I think. And you can hire them to upgrade parts of your panel or do the whole kit and caboodle. But I find their approach to focusing in on a very popular, specific airplane and really learn what it takes to bring it forward avionics-wise and pursue buyers or owners who don't want to spend oodles of money on a brand new airplane, but would rather upgrade theirs or even buy a used one and have that upgraded and then do it for a fraction of the cost. I find that very pro GA, pro airplane, and basically pro regular person. So in other words, I find it kind of awesome. <laughs> so listen or watch to my quick conversation with Brian in front of a gorgeous 2007 SR22 Turbo Gen 3 airplane. Here you go. So welcome everybody back to another special episode of the Student Pilot Cast. I'm here with Brian from Nexair Avionics. And Brian, I'd like you to just introduce yourself a little bit. Yeah, sure. So my name is Brian Wolf. I work for Nexair Avionics primarily in their 
sales department and uh, aircraft integration. So um, I'm here at uh, Oshkosh 2024 uh, once again with one of our Cirrus Garmin G500 TXI conversions and kind of modernizing that aging Cirrus fleet. Awesome. And tell me why you're in aviation. So uh, I got the aviation bug when I was a kid, just uh, <laughs> kind of like everybody else, a uh, friend of the family who's had an old Skyhawk and, you know, kind of really migrated toward it. And I uh, really enjoyed uh, flying when I started when I was 17, similar to everyone else, and continued the flight training through college and then uh, ended up at uh, Nexair shortly after on uh, a lot of this cutting edge avionics stuff. Do you still get to fly a little bit? So I fly a fair bit for the company. Uh, so a lot of our customers are not local to the Boston area. That's where we're based out of. Uh, so it is not uncommon for me to fly uh, one of our customers in or home for upgrades. Uh, and we have customers as far away as uh, Boston to LA, uh, Vancouver. We've gone to France before to work on airplanes. So really a, a pretty wide reach of uh, customers and flying around the country. All right. Well, longtime listeners and viewers will remember that in 2009, <laughs> I, did a, I did an interview with uh, Nexair um, because they were, they were working at the time. Uh, they, had, they had done some STCs and were working on a Saratoga. They called it the Saratoga NX. Um, I fell in love with the concept and with the airplane. Um, it was all brand new avionics at the time. Um, little long in the tooth by this time. <laughs> but... But I thought it was an interesting concept, and, and I really loved it. So I did an interview there. You can uh, go back and watch that. Uh, but I noticed this year um, that they've got this beautiful Cirrus here. It's a, it's a G3. Um, so 2007? Yeah, so it's a 2007 uh, model. It's a um, SR22 uh, turbo normalized. Uh, so we purchased it to do our Garmin conversions in it. So uh, not only this aircraft is equipped with the Garmin G500 TXI system we created, but we've done somewhere between 30 and 35 other aircraft as well. So uh, this aircraft is equipped with two Garmin 10.6 inch G500 TXI screens, Garmin GTN 750XI, 650XI, uh, with a lot of other Garmin um, products, including their newest product, the GDL60, their plane sync device for remote aircraft status, remote database updates, cockpit um, integration. Very cool, yeah, so um, most of us know that Cirrus has just released a, a new version of, of the uh, SR-22, um, and this seems to be almost equivalent to that, uh, but for a lot less money. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sure, so uh, our kind of primary market for the Cirrus aircraft is your G1s through your G3, so pre-perspective airplanes. So uh, that was starting in 2001 all the way through 2008 was when the last Avidine G3 was uh, produced. So basically what we look for in a customer's aircraft when we start the conversation is, uh, are you an Avidine aircraft? Are you a six-pack aircraft? What's currently equipped? And what's your end goal along with your mission budget and technology? So we try to help our customers navigate those items to try to optimize the best use out of their airplanes. Cool. So um, I'm, I'm sure that these new avionics have improved capabilities and uh, ease of use and uh, pilot workload. Can you talk a little bit about how the avionics have improved over the ones that Cirrus had, uh, had installed initially? Oh, yeah, sure. So big improvements with all these uh, devices we've installed in here. So. Uh, it's hard to list them all in all honesty, but a couple of the big ones that a lot of these Cirrus aircraft were non-loss aircraft. Mm -hmm. So they were really restricted to non-precision GPS approaches. So this aircraft is WAS equipped. So LPV, LNAV plus V, basically anything with vertical guidance we can see, um, including step downs. It'll fly step downs ver via its vertical nav uh, part of the autopilot. So pretty cool stuff on their arrivals and some of these uh, approaches as well. Other big thing that the Integra system didn't have that a lot of our customers really love is this synthetic vision. So synthetic vision is now integrated in this aircraft, um, seeing runways, any obstacles, traffic, really great for situational awareness for the pilot. Also, this one's integrated Garmin Smart Glide feature. So Smart Glide being a feature that is really meant to help the pilot in a 
really an emergency where the aircraft will take over if the button's depressed. The autopilot will pitch up to the best glide speed, steer you to the nearest airport with uh, the biggest runway, tune the, the weather on the standby, prompt you to squawk 7700, and give you the airplane back when you're in the airport environment. It comes over the uh, intercom system and says airport environment, maneuver and land. So it's a real big safety improvement, and there's so many other things that they've integrated to try to help that pilot in those uh, you know, critical situations. Yeah, so the, the auto glider, the, that safety feature, I guess it gives the pilot time to run some checklists, maybe um, try and alleviate the emergency some other way while the airplane is doing the aviate part. Well, yeah, exactly. So uh, all of us know, you know, it's very hard for humans to sit there and in that critical time of flight, not only to focus on flying the aircraft, but maybe run through your checklist, maybe understand why you're seeing that um, you know, kind of emergency situation, rough running engine, engine not running it at all. So it's a huge helping hand, one of those ones we all hope to never use. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So um, I'm curious a, a little bit about the business model. So if we could kind of focus a, sure. a little bit away from the airplane itself, I hate to do that, but that's okay. focus a little away from the airplane, um, kind of understand how you guys um, are running these upgrades. So um, I know you've got this airplane here, and uh, as I understand it, it's for sale. Like you're you're ready to sell it, and can you talk a little bit about um, how you're generally doing this? Is it mostly customers come to you with an airplane and want you to retrofit it, or do you sometimes do these on spec, where you acquire the airplane, retrofit it, and then sell it to somebody? Yeah, so uh, probably about. 95% or more of our business is getting our customers aircraft and bringing them up to speed on the TXI system. So this aircraft was really purchased for us because we all like to fly and it's always nice to have an airplane. So it's not uncommon for us at Next Air to grab an aircraft, upgrade the avionics, maybe do a paint job on it, have an airplane to fly for a little bit and also do some of these fun marketing things to make it uh, a reason to fly so um, our process really is uh, a lot of our sales are trading driven so back in 2011 when the initial Garmin GTN 650 750 was released uh, we started offering trade-in incentives trade in your 430s for the GTNs so a lot of our customers over the years until the TXI was released we were doing a lot of series on those trade-in incentives. Now that the G500 TXI and some other PFD and MFD solutions are becoming available for the series, we are now circling back with our customers and removing the Integra displays and installing Garmin displays. Once again, running that kind of trade-up promotion, give you some credit for your older displays and give you the best options out there. Excellent. Okay, so every once in a while you build one on spec and sell it, but most of the time it's your customers bringing something to you. Do you do any um, consulting if somebody wants to get into a, a Cirrus like the ones that you retrofit? Do they ever come to you before they've acquired the airplane and maybe get some help finding the right airplane? Oh yeah, that happens all the time. So <laughs> we have a lot of customers that sit there, they're excited to get in the Cirrus, they're excited to see what it has to offer. Maybe you're not in the purchasing category of wanting to go out and buy a brand new G7, but want similar avionics with the same capabilities um, with an older aircraft. So a lot of times I'll work with customers and they'll sit there and in their search, they'll send me links of the aircraft they find, controller, trade a plane, wherever they may. And we'll go ahead and kind of give them the, uh, the overlay, you know, a quick email of, you know, rough cost for everything and how it's going to work in their aircraft. Maybe they have some systems in their aircraft that are worth a little more money so the trades are a little better. Um, and then once they acquire the aircraft, then we work on getting them a formalized estimate, working them into the schedule. You know, right now we're running about, you know, somewhere around three to four months out. So that kind of planning purpose is important for us because a lot of the modifications we do to the aircraft are before the aircraft arrive. We integrate a whole main aircraft harness to the existing Cirrus harness. Um, so that is built before the aircraft arrives to the shop. We have some custom instrument panels that we have to make to accommodate all of our new equipment that is made before the customer enters the shop. So there's a bit of the planning process that we try to get ahead on. So when your aircraft comes to next air, it doesn't sit there stale mm -hmm. in the corner of the shop. So our TXI conversions, we try our best to move them uh, between four and six weeks. 
Yeah. That's, that's kind of amazing. So somebody could bring an aircraft to you, um, at least with a little bit of uh, fore planning, and they'll get that long before they would get a new aircraft from Cirrus. Yeah, I don't know what Cirrus is at <laughs> last time. I heard two years this week. I don't know if that's a true number or not. But yeah, if you get a good uh, used aircraft, you know, G1 through G3, you know, go through the purchasing process. What it's going to take some time, you know, maybe a month or two, you know, kind of the initial pains. Um, you know, we could certainly have you up and running new aircraft, new avionics within six months, probably without a problem. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And you end up with such a beautiful aircraft. Did you have to spearhead any STCs or anything like that to uh, be able to do these retrofits on these generations of Cirrus aircraft? So no. So this is uh, the nice part about this one. So with the Saratoga, we had to do the entire STC. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, Garmin package, it's all STC through Garmin. So Garmin had their own SR-22 and they went ahead and STC'd all the products that were in this aircraft. So it's been a nice uh, transition for us to kind of take over a lot of those projects and not have to start that STC process. Oh, that makes it great for you guys, doesn't it? Sure does. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anybody who's ever done an STC knows that it, it's uh, <laughs> you'll pull your hair out doing it for sure. Yeah. So if we could circle, come back full circle, back to this airplane, um, can you tell me a little bit about what you guys have done to it? What about the engine? What about the paint, interior, anything like that? What um, what have you done to bring it into the state that it's in right now? Sure. So uh, kind of our primary focus with this aircraft was the avionics. So the paint, it was painted before we purchased it. It's in uh, relatively good condition. Uh, interior was in good condition, but certainly original. And then the engine is a higher time engine, but running strong right now. So... Um, it's a pretty good aircraft. We have used it a ton for a lot of testing and improvements, working with the guys at Garmin to try to make the product the best it can be. Cool. And if somebody, um, I, I imagine that if somebody brought you um, maybe a run out engine or, you know, paint wasn't looking too good, that that would be part of the process if they wanted to go with you as well? So all that stuff, the paint, the engine, basically anything other than avionics, um, is going to go through uh, one of our partners that we work with. We work with people all around the country. Um, we're great at avionics. That's what we do. That's what we okay. stay doing. So there are a bunch of guys we can list for engine work and then paint for the Cirrus. There's really only one or two guys we know around the country that do an outstanding job. All right. But you would help coordinate that for a customer? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And uh, so tell me what you're selling this airplane for. Um, a little bit about it. Uh, what is the engine time? And, um, you know, just what could somebody come and get this from you for right now? Sure. So the airplane's being sold for $439,000. Um, the engine um, is a 2,023 hours, so a little over TBO. It did have a prop strike back in 2009 before we owned it. So it was ironed, new cylinders were put on, but it wasn't a zero time overall. So, um, the paint was done in 2014, so relatively good shape on the yeah. paint. It, um, it looks wonderful. So Yeah, certainly it's not perfect. It's 10 years old now. It's hard to believe, but <laughs> it's uh, in good work, good, good looking condition. So, And then the avionics were all done by us, so they were done in 2023, so all relatively new equipment. Excellent. Well, um, that would get somebody into a Cirrus, um, I don't know, 40% of the cost of a new one, something like that? Yeah, something like that. I mean, even if you put in the, the motor into the mix, I guess yeah. you could call it 50%. But uh, I think it's pretty great bang for your buck when you're out there looking for a, a good single-engine traveling aircraft. This aircraft has flown all over the country, and it has never failed us and has made good time doing it. Awesome. So is there anything I didn't ask that I should have asked about Nexair? Anything you want to talk about? I, You know, I, I think we nailed it all. I mean, we're... Uh, we're just a large avionics shop on the East Coast, just outside of Boston, and uh, really love working on the Cirrus, but certainly work on a lot of other airplanes uh, from smaller piston aircraft all the way through uh, some of your smaller turboprop and turbofan aircraft. Excellent. I just love the concept of taking the older aircraft and kind of updating them, bringing them up to speed, giving them life. This isn't even that old in the big scheme of things, but <laughs> but giving them, you know, kind of the capabilities of a brand new aircraft at a fraction of the cost. So I, I love what you guys are doing, and I hope you keep it up. Yeah, we're enjoying it as well, and just kind of keeping in mind that 
other than Cirrus, really no one makes new aircraft anymore. So <laughs> it's an aging fleet out there. We expect to continue rebuilds, not only on Cirrus aircraft, maybe on Twin Cessna, Bonanzas, King Airs, all those things because that fleet is aging and is in need of modernization. Excellent. Brian, thank you very much. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Good luck. So what do you think? You like their approach? How about the airplane? Let me know, or better yet, if you're so inclined, give them a call. If you're interested in doing something similar to your plane, or if you're going to want to do something like that to one you're acquiring. But anyway, it was cool to catch up with Nexair and see what they're doing, see that they're still going strong. Wait, is that Boston strong? I don't know. I'm from the other side of the country, so maybe I don't understand that Boston strong thing fully. In any case, they seem to still be up to their old tricks of taking older airplanes and making them new again. Well, newish again. I've got more stuff coming soon, so stay subscribed and do give me feedback on what you'd like to know about Oshkosh, the future of the podcast, my training episodes that are coming up, or anything else that you may want to hear about or know about. As happens at Oshkosh, talking to what my wife calls my imaginary friends, since she's never really met many of them, a lot of ideas pop up, and this Osh is no different. We've got some cool ideas of features, even some that could become regular features of the podcast, so we're brainstorming and working hard to get some of that going. I'm excited where we're headed with the podcast, including the training that will be released shortly. And I'm excited about the Fledgling Flightline podcast, too. And we've got some stuff coming up there as well. So if you haven't already, check that podcast out in your favorite podcast directory, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Music, Amazon Music, and many others. Or come find us at flightlinepodcast.com. Technically speaking, since this episode's content wasn't really aimed at learning or student pilots or new ratings, etc., it seems natural that it would have landed on the Flightline podcast. But I just loved the symmetry of publishing it here 15 years after the original Next Era interview episode. So there you go. What can I say? Both shows will have plenty coming, so please subscribe to both. It costs you nothing, and you don't want to miss out on what's to come. The FOMO is real, my friends, so don't suffer. Subscribe. Along those lines, as you've probably noticed, I've mentioned watch or listen to the episode a couple of times. This is one of those times that the audio and the video episodes are exactly the same, but they are both published. So if you're listening to this and you want to see the airplane or Brian, nobody wants to see my radio face, I'm sure, check out the video version of this episode on YouTube. It's linked to and referenced in the show notes or on the Student Pilot Cast website entry for this episode, episode 71 which can be found at studentpilotcast.com slash 71. Or you can just search for Nexair. That's N-E-X-A-I-R on the website search box, and you'll find both episodes, the 2009 and the 2024 episode versions. So let me know what you think, of course, and as I said before, reach out with any feedback or suggestions, or just showering praise, that works too. You can send me a note at bill at studentpilotcast.com or DM me on Twitter or X at at Bill Will. That's Bravo India Lima Lima, Whiskey India Lima. And while I'm interested in a lot of things in aviation and I love the focus, the technical nature, the learning, the teaching, the beauty, the perspective, and even to some extent the risks as that brings out the best in people, including me, to be as excellent as possible. None of that happens without the hardware, the flying machines that make this all possible. So every once in a while, we'll bring a feature like this one that just have to do with that, the machines that make it all possible, the machines that allow me to be a pilot.
music for today's episode is To Be an Angel by the Canadian band Uncle Seth. You can get more information and subscribe to the podcast feeds on the web at studentpilotcast.com. Remember, any instruction that you hear in this podcast was meant for me and for me alone in the situation I was in at the time. Please do not try to blindly apply anything you see or hear in this podcast to your own flying without thinking it through on your own completely. If you have questions about any aspect of your flying, please consult a qualified CFI.